Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. The Planning and Zoning Commission is a citizen advisor group to the City Council charged with making recommendations concerning land use plans, planning processes, and are on matters of plan implementation. All regular meetings of the Planning and Zoning Commission are recorded for record retention and transcription. The following is the official agenda of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Discussion and commission action will be limited to those items on the agenda. Any citizen who wishes to address the commission shall first be recognized by the chair and shall give his or her name and address for the record. If a citizen wishes to read documentation of any sort to the commission, he or she shall first seek permission from the chair. Oral testimony may be restricted to no more than three minutes per person. Agenda item number one, roll call and disclosure of conflict of interest, ex parte communication and site visit. So Aislinn, if uh, we could have you call the roll and if each uh, commission member would please state their name and uh, what area they are from and then anything they may, may need to disclose. Jared Burnt. My name is Jared Burnt. I live up in the Highland area. I was able to visit agenda item number two and agenda item number three. Three and four. There are my three and four, and I have nothing to report. Jack Moore. My name is Jack Moore, and I live in the Old Town District, and I did a site visit on item number four, and that is all I have to report. Sarah O'Connor. My name is Sarah O'Connor. I reside in the College neighborhood, and I did a site visit on agenda items three and four, and I have nothing else to report. Julia Sanders. My name is Julia Sanders. I live in the South Park area. I completed site visits to agenda items three and four, and have nothing further to report. Ryan Satterfield. I'm Ryan Satterfield from the Highland area, and I have nothing to report. Okay. okay. Uh, Sean Parker is okay. excused this evening, and Bill Hancock is unexcused. Very good. Thank you, Asa. All right, agenda item number three, uh, preliminary plat. Oh, sorry, agenda item number two, approval of minutes. Um, commissioners, have you had a chance to review the minutes? Any discussion uh, or a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. I'll and second. I will second that, emo that motion. Very good, it's been moved and seconded. Seconded by- Doesn't matter. What do you want me to take as a second? You can take more. Okay, uh, Aislinn, would you call the, the roll? O'Connor? Yes. Moore? Yes. Brent? Yes. Or Brent, sorry. That happens all the time. Sanders? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. Okay, motion carries. All right, agenda item number three, preliminary plat, Breezy Point Division 5. Brandon Ratliff, represented by RMES, has submitted a request to subdivide 1.14 acres, more or less, into five residential lots located on, on east of Philbin Road and south of Quinn Road. So if we could hear from the applicant. Good evening, Mr. Chair and Commission members. My name is Mitchell Greer. I'm with RMES at 600 East Oak here in Pocatello, representing the applicant on this uh, proposal. Uh, most of you are familiar with uh, this project because we just recently brought forward Breezy Point Divisions uh, 3 and 4. Uh, this is now 5. Uh, because it's kind of a short little consolidated project, the developer felt like it might be a good time to kind of finish this little area off while he's doing these other divisions. And so uh, we brought uh, this particular project forward. So it's essentially uh, 5 lots. Um, the smallest lot size is 7,000, roughly 7,000 square feet. The required lot size for this zone is 5,000 square feet. Um, the total project area is really just over an acre, uh, pretty small. Uh, just a couple things to note, um, and it's a little hard to see on my Google display. It seems like every time I come, I get a little less connected with what's happening here. but. Um, Hopefully that'll get resolved at some point. But this is the Breezy Point three and four uh, project that we did and had a fair amount of discussion on. And 
you know, made some revisions to how that uh, actually was going to circulate. So you can see right now we have two accesses off this project onto Philbin Road, uh, a future access or stub that would extend over to Kinghorn uh, to the west. That was something that uh, staff wanted added. And then at some point in the future, there may be something that connects to the south on the cottage. Um, in the original master plan, this, this street was proposed to actually come out onto, uh, um, onto Quinn Road at this location. Um, and so we've made that, we've made a change where that access is no longer going to happen. So there's a few reasons why uh, that got eliminated. One, it's kind of at the crest of the hill. It's uh, difficult, uh, really, as far as sight distance goes at that location for an access. And so uh, that was kind of the main reason why we eliminated it. There's also a, a, a main power line that runs along here that uh, actually has a, a big utility pole that is right in the middle of that access that we've found since the original proposal back in about 2008 that that's uh, very, very, very uh, difficult to move. And so um, for those reasons, we've kind of refined this. We feel like we have enough adequate circulation and, and uh, things, and I think staff concurs that uh, the project functions just fine without it, and it's probably better not to have it. So uh, I believe that we comply with all the ordinances and codes. Um, we are certainly uh, have reviewed the conditions that staff has presented, and those are pretty standard. I don't think there's anything in there that's of concern. Uh, to my client, and so I would just ask that you approve uh, the project as presented. I'd answer questions if you have them. If not, we ask for your approval. Thank you, Mitch. Any questions for Mitch? All right, thank you. Carl, could we get the staff report? Uh, good evening, Commission. Carl Anderson, City of Pocatello, Senior Plan, for the record. Uh, tonight, uh, you have before you the preliminary plan application uh, for Breezy Point, Division 5, uh, which is a uh, preliminary plan application for six uh, lots, five residential, and one which abuts uh, Quinn Road there to the north. The property is located at the north end of Breezy Point uh, Drive. Uh, the zoning for the property is residential medium density single family, which requires a minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet for a single family home. The minimum lot size proposed is 7,066 uh, square feet. Staff has reviewed the application and finds the, the proposed Breezy Point Division 5 is compliant with all applicable standards of City Code 16.20.050, assuming compliance with the conditions listed in the staff report. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Merrill Quell, uh, Public Works Engineer, is also available to answer any questions that you might have pertaining to uh, Public Works requirements. Very good. Thank you, Carl. Any questions for Carl? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, the items before you, any discussion? If no discussion, I'd entertain a motion. I motion to recommend approval of the preliminary plat application from owner Ratliff to the Breezy Point Division 5 subdivision. Finally, the application does meet the standards for approval. I'll second that. Very good. It's been moved and seconded. Ace Lynn, would you call the vote? Sanders? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Burnt? Yes. Moore? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number four, preliminary plat, Trail Creek Estates Division 2. McCormick Ranch LLC, represented by RMES, has submitted a request to subdivide 13.24 acres, more or less, into 34 residential lots located on Champlain Place and Magellan Loop. If we could hear from the applicant. Uh, good evening, Mitchell Greer again with uh, RMES 600 East Oak, uh, representing the applicant on this particular project. Uh, so this is a, a continuation of Trail Creek development. Uh, this is a proposal that was originally conceived in about 2004. Uh, it uh, took several years to work through all the uh, issues with regard to utility service, access, uh, 
just everything associated with the project. And so it finally, I believe, got constructed in about 2006. So you can see kind of this first division. Um, this first division here, you know, 30 some odd lots in this, in this area was constructed in about 2007, which is uh, pretty much the worst time to ever be constructing lots in the history of, of uh, our, our country. And so the development really wasn't that successful and uh, the developers sort of fell on hard times. Uh, and uh, this property has gone through a couple of different ownership changes through, through time and now uh, with the new economic conditions and the way things are happening, uh, we're continuing with this project. A couple of things, nice things that has happened since uh, the previous proposal and that is uh, my clients who are here tonight, if we have additional questions for them, uh, own uh, also in conjunction with this, purchased the Holy Spirit property uh, to the north, which really makes uh, this project a lot more viable um, than it was previously because uh, it provides a lot of circulation potential, a lot of uh, utility potential, things like that. And so, um, that really helps uh, the long-term viability of this particular project. So kind of a little bit of background, uh, we'll kind of discuss our, our proposal that we have before you tonight. So um, right now, uh, there's, a, there's a single access that goes up uh, to the project. And if you've seen it, you can kind of see it's, it was uh, quite a challenge to get that access up to the project. Um, in, the, in the original conceived uh, master plan, there was a second access that would be exactly similar to this that would come out here and do kind of the same thing that would come down onto uh, Trail Creek Road. That, um, that project with that second access was actually approved by the city. We had final plat plans everything developed and it was approved and essentially um, in this configuration that you see tonight with the exception of that second access so with the purchase of that additional property um, and, and things what that's done is kind of opened up the ability to maybe have a more reasonable access for the second access that would actually come out on a different a completely different uh, network of streets which Overall, will be much, much better for this area, and, and that should, uh, should help. Uh, so this particular proposal we have is 34 lots. It's a little different than how we normally present them, and that is because uh, we've separated it into two areas. So it, one is kind of at the end of the Champlain Street, and that's where the majority of the lots are, um, extending essentially west up the hill to uh, where it would terminate um, kind of in a little hammerhead situation there at the end and that's uh, that's that's uh, one area the other area is kind of on the north end there's really only eight lots on that north side i believe and that uh, my batteries are going dead on my mouse uh, that's in this area and that's at the end of, of magellan and uh, originally uh, we were going to extend it uh, north a little bit further and, and maybe take into some of the uh, some of these a couple of these crossings that would have to happen for the roads to extend um, and in order to provide some flexibility for how those roads could route through there um, we stopped it a little bit short of that of those draws so that we can analyze a little bit more how those roads should continue to the north um, and our client was really anxious to kind of get a project going and so because of that, we, we kind of cut that back a little bit from where we were initially. So one of the things to, to note uh, that we've been working on and that uh, wasn't uh, available to the previous owners, and that is uh, we've secured an easement. So this, this property right here is owned by our developers, but there is a, there's a couple of uh, private homes within this uh, project that uh, are not owned so there's this this area and this area this home that kind of this project kind of loops around and they have 
a paved access drive that goes up and connects to their driveways. So what my client has been able to do is secure a temporary access uh, easement, I guess, for access out of this project. So that's going to provide the second access until such time as we were able to extend to the north and connect that through. So this, uh, this will have to be improved. This, this little street here, uh, the extension of Champlain would have to be improved enough to support emergency services and emergency access up to this, uh, up to this particular driveway. So uh, one other thing to note that kind of staff brought up, and, and it might be interesting for you guys to see, but when the developer, the original development was conceived, they constructed a water tank uh, in this location. It's kind of uh, west of, of this development, but it was placed in such a location as to provide culinary water and fire protection to this development. And they extended all the utilities and you can kind of see, it's a little difficult to see, but there's kind of some, you can kind of see how the utilities were placed up there. So there's water, um, there's some communication lines and things like that that were already placed. And so those roads were defined back in 2006 um, when we originally developed this project. And so that kind of fixes where where we are. It's, it's very difficult to, to move or reconfigure anything at this point because all of that infrastructure is already in place, the original water line. They also did construct a booster um, kind of at the end of Oakwood Drive. And uh, as far as I'm aware, this probably is one of the largest um, initial cost developments that we've ever been involved with and probably brought the most um, infrastructure with it. Um, to the city of Pocatello. So right now what we're proposing is 34 lots. Uh, there's, uh, the lot size is much larger than, the average lot size is much larger than what's required by the zone. Um, there are some steep uh, slopes associated with uh, the extension of the Champlain Place. It is, um, we believe there's certainly adequate building site between uh, the road and where the um, steep slopes would be, but we we do need to uh, uh, comply with the hillside ordinances, and we recognize that that's something that we um, need to do, and we've uh, started that process now. Um, so that's uh, I think for the most part, this is the only area where presently where there's steep slopes, and again kind of the way the water lines are configured and how things have happened, it kind of, it really can't change a, a ton from, from what we have proposed here. Um, I think that's a pretty good uh, kind of summary of what's happened up there. Hopefully um, I've covered most of the issues. Uh, our, my, developer, my client is here uh, to answer questions if there may be some there. Um, I'm certainly available to answer questions. We believe it, it complies uh, with the codes of the city of Pocatello. Um, and I think it's it will be good to kind of get this project kind of moving forward again after uh, about a 15 year hiatus. So I would ask that you approve the project as presented and uh, we've read the staff report comments and I think uh, we're sort of agree in agreement with uh, most of those. Very good, thank you, Mitch. Um, one question for you on the secondary access um, there. Is that for emergency only, and will it be signed as such? Okay, very good. Any questions for Mitch, Julia? I have two questions, just more for curiosity. You just mentioned Oakwood Drive. Where is that? So, I mean, orient to the north, but this, this is Oakwood Drive, right here, okay. and and the and the the facility, and you can see it down in here. This is the booster station that I was referencing. It's kind of in the bottom of this draw that comes out of Oakwood Drive. And then you mentioned Holy Spirit property. I'm I've been here for three years. I don't know what that means. Okay, so uh, the Catholic Church 
purchased uh, a fair amount of property, 400 acres and something like that. 188 and you know over uh, south of this project project so this is off of Gaithy Road so if you've driven down Gaithy Road you can see how that got realigned at one time um, and that realignment happened Gaithy Road just to go, used to go straight through right so it was a, it was a through street and this this uh, street that's unnamed I think at this or maybe it's actually it's actually Gaithy, and then there's going to be another North Gaithy, I guess. I don't know exactly how that's how that naming is going to happen, but this Gaithy Road was constructed. So if you if you go out there, um, you would be able to see that infrastructure that was placed. And if you look at my screen, you can kind of see I'm highlighting an area right here. So this area was graded and developed. All the utilities were extended up this Gaithy Road. And this was developed in anticipation of the Holy Spirit uh, Church, Catholic Church, building a new facility uh, at that location. So they were going to move the school, the gym, everything that they had was going to move up here. They've since realigned their their goals, and you've seen some of their proposals come through um, with kind of rehabilitating some of their existing facilities. And so this idea was scrapped. Um, and they put the property up for sale, and my clients purchased that property. And so that's what's um, nice about this now, is we have one person in control that kind of has a unitary goal of developing that west side, and they have full access to to those, uh, that utility, the, the access, the utilities, the infrastructure that's been developed as part of that Holy Spirit um, project. Where before, you know, the church really wasn't interested in necessarily developing residential lots or extending the infrastructure. Their goal was to get their their parcel developed and get their, their facility up there, where now, uh, you know, we kind of have an aligned goal where we can kind of take advantage of all that. Thank you. Is that? Mm -hmm. Hey Mitch, I got a question. So going back to the secondary access road, I, I remember being on that road maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago. And um, I remember it was kind of steeper when you got to the top, it kind of made a dog leg left to go back to the other houses back there. And it was a single lane road that was asphalt, if I remember correctly, okay? Is, was there enough room at that dog leg left where it goes left to be able to, to have a fire truck turn on it? Because I remember it was pretty tight. Um. To be honest with you, I haven't uh, I haven't studied the full extent of the road. Yeah. I, I think we're going to have to work with the fire department. I think they've looked at it to some extent um, and have. I, I'm not going to say it's been approved, but I think there's been we've had a lot of discussion about that up to this point. So we're going to have to satisfy what uh, what they require, and, and I think we'll make it whatever it needs to be to satisfy those requirements. Yeah, we'll discuss yeah. that. And I think, I think there's been a lot of discussion about it. And I think for the most part, they're accepting of that growth. I just, I don't want to speak for them or on behalf of them. But, um, Very good. Other questions for Mitch? Okay, thank you, Mitch. Carl, could we uh, have you give the staff report? Carl Anderson again for the record, uh, Super Hotel Planning Development Services. Uh, I'll try to keep my presentation a relatively brief. I don't have a lot more to add. Um, just to reiterate the application is for preliminary plat for the Trail Creek Divi Estates Division 2. Uh, submitted by McCormick Branch LLC and presented by Rocky Mountain Engineering and Surveying. The proposal is for 34 residential lots. Uh, eight of the residential lots are proposed at the north end of Magellan Loop, uh, Loop extent, or Magellan Road extension. And then with the remaining 26 uh, uh, with access provided from Champlain Place. Uh, the zoning for the property is residential low density, uh, the, which requires a minimum lot size of 7,500 square feet for a single family home. And the minimum lot size being proposed is 8,614 square feet. 
Uh, as mentioned by the applicant's rep representative, the topographical slope for multiple lots proposed is greater than 50%, primarily on the south end of Champlain Road there. Uh, the applicant has met with planning and public works staff and submitted a preliminary slope analysis. Um, the applicant has also indicated that a geotechnical report will be provided. Uh, per condition number two listed in the staff report, all standards of Pocatello Municipal Code 1705.140, which is the site and building development guidelines, uh, the applicant shall be met at the time of the final plat application submittal. Uh, so we're continuing to work with them to address those standards. Uh, staff has reviewed the application and finds that the proposed Trail Creek Estates Division 2 subdivision is compliant with all applicable standards of city codes 16.20.050, assuming compliance with the conditions listed in the staff report. So that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, Merrill Quell, our public works engineer, is also available to answer any questions that you may have. So. All right, thank you, Carl. Questions for Carl? Very good, thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Merrill? Any discussion that you would like to have, commissioners? Any thoughts or comments? I'd like to make a, a motion to, for approval of the application. Motion to recommend approval of the preliminary plat application from owner of McCormick Ranch LLC for the Trail Creek Estates Division 2 subdivision. Finding the application does meet the standards for approval under Chapter 16.20.050 of Pocatello Municipal Code with the conditions of approval. Good. It's been moved. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Hayslin, would you call the vote? More? No. Burnt? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. Motion carries. All right, that concludes our meeting. Thank you for coming.